Yo, what's up everyone? It's your boy Chris Purpose back at it again with another Gems of War Kingdom Mythic video for you guys. So this team right here with one of the best troops in Glacial Peaks, which is Safrax, is one of the best trophy farming teams in Gems of War. All right, so let's take a look at this team first off. The main option for damage here on this team is going to be Safrax. Safrax is a boss dragon from uh, Glacial Peaks with a 28 mana cost, a pretty high mana cost, which all the gem dragons have, right? It uses blue, yellow, and purple mana. The spell is Sapphire Spray. It will deal damage to, an, to all enemies boosted by blue gems. Then it will convert five blue gems to blue giant gems. There's a 10% chance for an extra turn boosted by blue gems. The traits are... Song of Ice, it will summon an Ice Storm at the start of battle. That's a blue storm. Uh, gem Scales, all these Gem Dragons will have Gem Scales, a 55% uh, Skull Damage Reduction. And Sapphire Aura, it will give two magic to all blue allies when matching blue gems. Now, this team right here is a pretty simple team. And I think a lot of players, once they have these uh, weapons and troops, you should be able to execute this team. If not, there are a couple alternatives for the team as well when it comes down to weapons. So up front on the team, we have right here the Sea Troll. This troop right here is a giant troop. As a matter of fact, it's an elemental giant troop from the Darkstone Kingdom. It uses yellow, uh, purple and green mana, and the spell is Drown. It will double the number of blue gems on the board, then it will create... Uh, three blue gems. Now, that's pretty cool when, for example, you're using it with Safrax. Safrax is a blue storm, so it's it's very likely that you're going to be having a lot of blue gems on the board after an explosion. Of course, it has for its traits, its, its traits, man, its traits are uh, giant bond, allied giants will gain two life, immune, it's immune to disease and lycanthropy, and troll regeneration, it will gain three life at the start of each turn. Right, so Safrax is going to be in the second slot here, followed by the Ruby Macaque weapon. Um, perfect option for this team. It uses blue mana, it uses red, and it uses brown. Of course, three, three mana colors makes it pretty easy for this weapon to get spell ready. If indeed you're using it with a class that has a 50% start. And right there, the class that I decided to go with is Titan, because obviously I have another giant on the team, which is the Sea Troll. So this is going to be giving all giants a 50% mana start. And along with that, this is the setup for the talent. So I have Impact set here. You can switch this around and possibly go with uh, something else. But I decided to just roll with Impact right here, followed by other notable talents. Um, the, the Lightning Strike is notable here because you need that explosion. So mainly for the traits and for Lightning Strike. The other things aren't as important on a trophy farming team. And that's what this is going to be focused on. Um, most likely Explore 9. If you have enough magic, you can go ahead and do Explore 10. But I would recommend to stick to Explore 9. It's the first level of Explore in which you're going to be gaining um, three trophies per battle. Leprechaun is going to be on the team here as well. And the banner for this team is the Sorrowful Banner from the Sea of Sorrow faction. It's a plus two on blue, plus one on brown. And we're minusing yellow. Uh, Safrax is going to be getting all the blue she needs. So I don't really need to be uh, concerned about that on this team. All right, so I'm in Stormheim. This is battle number one on this very good trophy farming team. All right, let's go. Cast Leprechaun to get the troop spell ready. Once you get that, double the amount of blue gems on the board. Everybody gets spell ready afterwards. Cast Safrex. Cast Ruby Macaque. And that's about it. Um, there are other options. So, for example, you can actually use Dawnbringer on this team as well. I think I'm going to go through about one run with this weapon. Then I'm going to change it and show you guys how it works with Dawnbringer. There we go. Wow, there's a lot of skulls on this board. So let's cast Safrax, extra turn, Ruby Macaque. And as you guys can see, this is a pretty fast team. The only thing that's not there on this team is obviously the Safrax does not have a 50% start. So you have to start it from zero right here on this team. And for me, I tend to prefer to use my, um, my medals of Nysha, all three, as opposed to just using, just using two and getting a 20% start from Anu. Uh, that's usually not my preferred route when doing trophy farming. I want to get all the magic to the troops to deal all the magic that I, all the magic damage that I can. You know what I mean? All right, let's go, Leprechaun, and double the blue gems. As you can see, once you cast Leprechaun, majority of the times they're gonna have more than enough blue gems falling on the board. So that when you double the amount of gems, uh, ninety percent of the time you will never miss. It's pretty rare to see Safrax 
not get spell ready after casting the sea troll. All right, let's go. Leprechaun. See, almost every single time <clears throat> the troll is getting spell ready. Saffrax, Ruby Macaque. It's definitely a pretty fast team. I wish there was an option, of course, that I wouldn't have to worry about when, when, um, when the gems cascade for, you know, Ruby Macaque is exploding the board. It's not the best thing, but it still works. All right, so let's switch out this on the team. Let's go and grab Dawnbringer. So Dawnbringer is one option that you can use. You can also use this weapon right here, which is the Diamond Ring of Fire and Ice. It's a very expensive weapon, but you can use it. But preferably, I think Dawnbringer is a better option. Um, because obviously Dawnbringer is going to be dealing damage with a boost ratio, right? So that's one of the things you want to do. You want to have a boost ratio so that if indeed there are some levels of boost that you can get from the team, it, it will work out for you. All right, let's try it out with Dawnbringer and see how it works. But undoubtedly, my favorite option is is the, uh, the Ruby Macaque. Let's go. Double the gems. One two as you see it, it still works it works really really well with this weapon but i don't know i want to switch things up i don't want to always use dawnbringer ruby macaque is a way i think it's a cheaper weapon to some extent i'm not 100 percent sure on that if you guys remember which weapon is pricier i think i can actually check it right now in the soul forge but i'm kind of lazy you know what i mean <laughs> i'm here chatting commentating while i'm making this video so i'm kind of lazy i'm not gonna check the soul forge right now All right let's finish this up Oh, this is a pretty sticky board. Not many gems for my uh, my troops here. Let, there we go. All right, let me get some. Uh, yeah, let me get some of this. Yeah, there we go. Double the gems. There we go. We got an extra turn. Perfection. Wow, the AI is getting so many cascades. There you go. Still got the kill. All right, let's try this again. Um... I want to check to see if there are any other weapons, though, that we could possibly use. So, just to give you guys a third option to use with this team. All right, let's explode the board. Oh, we got spell ready without casting the um, without casting the sea troll. That's good. Oh, that sucker survived. Ah, there we go. Still gonna kill him. How did he survive, man? Maybe I did not. I should have cast Leprechaun at the start. That would have helped out big time. All right, we're at the mini boss fight. Let's see if we can explode the board here again. Come on. Get spell ready, sir. Very good. Now double the gems. Perfection. That worked out very well. Let's nice cast. This one didn't get an extra turn, but it's okay. Kill him. There we go. All right, we had the mythic boss fight. Wow, that was quick. We, we were just there. And we were back there again. So I think I'm going to need to cast my Saffrax more than once here because Mistralis has a... Uh, spell damage reduction. So let's do this. All right, let's match this to get some more magic. Cast that one. Yeah, she definitely has that, man. She. There we go. Let's cast Saffirex twice. There we go. We got it. So it still got the job done. If I was gonna rank this trophy farming team in comparison to some of the others that I've put out, I would probably rank this in the probably in the top. Five. So the best trophy farming team when it comes down to speed and damage at a high magic level is definitely the Diamond Tina team. Followed by um followed by what would I say now? Followed by the Topazor team. I think the Topazor team is a is amazing on Explore 9. Very good because the synergy, the the colors, everything works. Um and then most likely I would follow up with the Phoenicia team would be in the third slot. And I think this team would be somewhere either fourth position, if not fourth position, fifth position. It's in the top five for sure because it, it, it has a strong spell damage and, of course, it has great options. You can use Dawnbringer or you can use Ruby Macaque on this team and it still gets the job done. So you guys tell me what you think about this team, man. Do you like the Saffrax team here, or do you tend to prefer to use some other teams when you're trophy farming? And indeed, if you guys have some cool Saffrax teams as well that you want to try out, drop them in the comment section. I'll be glad to check them out. As well as sending over anyone that you know uh, likes good PvP teams, good Guild Wars teams, or Explore teams. So come on over and check out the channel. All right, guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.